Well, happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you so much for coming on out. Um, just a reminder again, as we always do, if you have your cell phone uh, on, oh, blue box. Sorry, Mia. Okay. The blue box is here so that everyone online can also um, view what's going on. But again, as a friendly reminder, if you have a cell phone, please put it on uh, silent. And if you got to have a conversation, go ahead and take it on on the outside. And we aloha everyone online and thank you for your patience. We're also going to hear uh, about our debris cleanup from Army Corps of Engineers. And then we're going to go ahead and do what we normally do, which is open up the floor for questions um, from those of you here. Uh, we'll go ahead and have our team help with any answers uh, that we can provide tonight or come back to you. We'll give the a more current and revised guideline on cesspools. They had a meeting with the Wahikuli residents. So what they want you to do is take a look at it in anticipation of this meeting on April 16th. You'll also, uh, well, we're aiming for it, you'll also be able to meet uh, folks who are going to be behind the expedited permitting office that's going to open under the Office of Recovery at this meeting. So this is going to be a very helpful meeting all in all. It won't be the only discussion we'll have, but this one will help us. But this one is designed to be in person. So our team will facilitate and go through that um, process. And it will be announcing the additional workshops. They'll always be on Saturday. Uh, and they'll always be led by our community planning team. And finally, this Saturday, um, March 16th and the 23rd, there's a temporary housing resource going on an event this weekend and on the 23rd it was announced by francis Cal last week we just wanted to remind you it's a good opportunity it's hosted by um, some good agencies here and the representation will be pretty broad so please come it's this weekend march 16th and the 23rd 9 a.m at the western maui Kaanapali. okay before we call up council member palton um we'll have mayor bisson offer remarks and we'll go to council member how many of you guys getting meeting fatigue? Everybody, yeah? You just got about five or six more that you guys got invited to. Aloha ahi ahi, nakupuna, namakua, nauhana, nahua. Mahalo everybody for being here this evening. Sorry about the warmth. Uh, it wasn't designed to make the meeting go shorter or faster. Just so happens we're dealing with this. We'll get those fans turned up more if you need them. Uh, I'm just here to thank everybody again for your persistence and your resilience and your able, ability to come, come back again uh, to meet with us on our Wednesday meetings. Um, we have a very narrow uh, focus tonight that we're gonna talk about. So hopefully you get a lot more questions in about that particular subject. Um, I did wanna point out that Joe Campos from Department of Human Services is also here today. He traveled in from Oahu, so we could take some questions that may have to do with that piece uh, that that uh, we can talk about as well, so feel free. I did wanna thank Summer Silva and more, imp more importantly, her mother for making this beautiful lay for me today. Thank you for being in this uh, Summer on behalf of your mom. So again, we'll get right to it. I'd like to introduce your council member. She has some information to share with you. Uh, Tamar Palton. Thank Aloha mai kako. Um, I, I have three specific things um, to share with you that are all kind of timely. And so I'll start with the, the good news first. Um, the Office of Economic Development, um, every year there's about $140,000 each district gets for um, dollars in unencumbered funds. If you'd like to apply for that money, they say to go online to the Office of Economic Development and check out the grant handbook for what's eligible. And if you are interested, uh, put in an application by April 30th and applications will be open until all the monies are gone. So that's the first announcement. There's uh, grant funding available through the counties. Office of Economic Development, they would like our applications in by April 30th because June 30th is the end of the fiscal year. Uh, the second um, announcement is last Friday at the County Council meeting, 
Mayor Bishin uh, requested for us on the county council to uh, pass the eminent domain resolution on the floor so that we can get started with the Central Maui landfill site that was a result of the survey. Um, so we needed six votes to be able to pass that on the floor and we did not get six votes. Um, so what's at the best case that has delayed us about two weeks, at the worst case, possibly longer. Um, and so what I wanted to share with you, the process to get involved, because although Mayor Bissin asked for it and I did my best to try and um, persuade my colleagues, apparently some folks didn't hear that well. So um, on Tuesday, March 19th, we'll be talking more about it. And I'm not sure if it's because only three people testified. And of those three people, two people testified against eminent domain and one county worker testified for eminent domain. So it, we'll be discussing it more. I mean, we discussed it for almost three hours last Friday, but we'll be discussing it more Tuesday, March 19th at 1.30 p.m. And I, I've brought the agenda. I can hand it out till I get the last one and then you guys can take pictures if you'd like. Um, and there won't be any voting on Tuesday. It's more discussion. The voting will happen next week, Friday, for the first time. This kind of resolution requires two votes. So um, there will be a vote Friday, March 22nd, and we'll need six votes um, saying yes. We only had five. So the four that had voted against eminent domain, Council Member Sugimura, Council Member Kama, Council Member Cook, Council Member U Hodgins. So we just need one of those no votes to turn into a yes vote and then we can start to move forward with the Central Maui landfill, uh, eminent domain and building it and transporting it and things like that. So May 19th discussion, also an opportunity for testimony. Testimony can be sent to great.committee at Maui, Com or, sorry, e-comment, and there's instructions on here. And then on Friday, it can be sent to county.clerk at MauiCounty.us, and then two Fridays, the, not the next Friday after, next Friday, four Fridays from now, up again for the second reading. So that's what's required. Um, Mayor Bissin made the decision, but to move forward with eminent domain, he needs council approval, and, and we weren't able to secure that on Friday, but we're gonna try again and try again. Um, And the last announcement that I wanted to share with you folks, um, a lot of people have been asking me about the bypass um, going north, as well as, you know, about leaving on the highway instead of just everybody going in and out of Kiave Street. And um, I'm not a decision maker on that. However, this Friday at 11 a.m., the Maui Metropolitan Planning Organization Policy Board is having a meeting. Um, it's on WebEx and after tonight's meeting, I'll post all this information on, on my council member, Facebook and, and all the other social medias. But agenda item 3C is the status of the Lahaina Bypass Northern portion and um, to send testimony, they, they'd love to receive it like, you know, by tomorrow, because the meeting is on Friday to give the decision makers a chance to read your testimony before, before the meeting, mauimpo.org. And, and the decision makers on that board, uh, there is the state director of transportation, the county director of transportation, um, a county planning director, public works director, um, Senator McKelvey, Representative Tyson Yaki, 
Council Member Cook, Council Member Johnson, and Council Member Sugimura. So you can send it to getinvolved at mauimpo.org and also CC all those folks, um, their email addresses for the county. People should be on the county website and the state on uh, capital.hawaii.gov. You can find the state senator and the state representative on there. And I'll stick around till the end of the meeting in case anybody needs clarification. And then after the meeting tonight, I'll post it to my social media. So it'll be right there at the top for today. Thank you. Thanks, Council Member Halton. Aloha. I hope everyone's doing, doing well. Um, I'm going to share with you some great news tonight. Um, well, I think it's great news. I hope you agree with me. But before I do that, I, I'm going to just direct my attention to the mayor. I, I don't have meeting fatigue. I, I could go, we could go all day if we're helping you uh, work through this. I'm, I'm here, we're here for you. Uh, and, I, and I mean that. Um, and I, and I just wanted to, to thank Mahina for putting me fourth. She told me I had to stay in the box, which I have a hard time doing, but I'm fourth in the batting order. Uh, so I'm batting cleanup. So hopefully this will be a home run. Uh, and if you're not a baseball fan, maybe you can start because opening day is the 28th of March. Okay. So I told you it's gonna be good news. I just wanna start with a public service announcement. If you haven't submitted an ROE and you'd like to opt into the core program, we want to help you. So if you see one of these red shirts around, you come find us. And I'm going to give you a phone number later. We'll talk to you about it. If you're sitting on the fence and you just have questions and it's a big decision, I, I know that. Come talk to us. We'll, we'll answer your questions and, and help, help you make a decision that's right for, for you and, and your family. But, but we want to be part of your decision making, at least not leave you with unanswered questions. So as of today, I told you I had good news. So as of today, if you look at the public viewer, it'll say 294 properties have been cleared of debris. The actual number, we haven't updated it yet. It'll be updated soon. It's 306. So we have crested the 300 <laughs> property mark. Um, I, I, am, I used to teach math, but I'm not going to do math in public, but that's somewhere just less than 20% of the properties, and we've been going at this just less than 60 days. So that's why I'm pumped. This is exciting. And I, and I have been out the streets every day with my team, talking to you, talking to residents, and, and when they see their property cleared, and they see a lot that's ready to build on, it brings a twinkle to their eye, something that many of you haven't had for a while. So we wanna bring you that joy. Again, if you're having questions about opting in or ROEs, come see us. We're gonna give you some straight answers to let you make an informed decision about which program you wanna, you wanna join. Now, we've also relinquished as of right now, so what you see on the viewers is a little less, 76 properties We've relinquished those ROEs back to Maui County. So it's, in, it's, it's back to their hands. That means you have the paperwork that, that you need from the core and what the county and I us have agreed on and FEMA agreed on for you to start the next phase uh, of your life here in Lahaina. And we've done, we're, we're doing that with 21 residential crews as of today. And we're going to stick with 21 for a little bit longer. We might, we might increase it. Right? We're just managing fatigue, managing traffic on the roads, and we're trying to do this safely. Safely. Because we don't do things that without, without it being high quality, and, and safety is the first thing that, that chips away at our quality. For commercial, um, I told you, I think, two weeks ago that we're starting our commercial contract. We had three commercial crews out today working on some of the commercial properties down in, down in Lahaina. Um, I don't have enough data yet. No, we have not enough days, I'm not data to tell you, you know, kind of what our average is going to be. There's the commercial properties are all uniquely sized. Some are really large, some are, are smaller. So in another week or two, I'll be able to give you some more stats on sort of how fast we're moving through commercial properties. But again, that's a that's another great sign that, that rebuilding will start and you'll have your, your Lahaina back uh, 
better and more resilient, maybe not better, but more resilient uh, than, 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 than what it was uh, and a place that you can, again, be proud of to call, to call home. We also have 173, approximately 173 deferred properties. So those were properties that we couldn't get on to do phase one due to overhead hazards or an excessive quantity of, of metals on the, on the property. And so those, are, those span both commercial and residential properties. And I may be talking to someone in here that's a deferred property and you're probably wondering, why can't I get, why can't I get some action on my property? So I'm going to talk about ROEs for the third time tonight, and I'll probably close with it as well. So if you have a deferred property and you haven't signed an ROE, you're going to remain a deferred property for a while. Um, so if you're confused or you, you, know, you want to talk about ROEs, we'll talk to you about that. If you are, have submitted an ROE and you're a deferred property, um, we are going to start to undefer those properties. And, and we're gonna post this on the website uh, soon, uh, probably in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, but I'm just gonna kind of give you a brief summary of the flow diagram of how, if you're a deferred property, you can become an undeferred property. So if you submitted your ROE, I said it five times, you will get a call to inform you we are going to make your home safer for re-entry. Okay, I didn't asbestos or any you know any hazards we're gonna we're gonna look for those once once we've identified those it, hopefully there are none there but if there are we've identified those and mitigated those then we're gonna call again and we're gonna ask you do you desire to visit your property and kind of look for things in the debris um, that's what we that's what happened for for the phase one properties that were not deferred if if you say yes um, I'm going to ask you to go to visit MEMA, uh, get your pass, which will get you into the impacted area, and your some, some personal protective equipment, also known as PPE, right? That'll just make, make sure that you're safe when you enter uh, your property again. And, and we're going we're gonna to ask, because we're still in a, in a bit of an emergency here, right? So, so still... Uh, a bit of a public health emergency, we're gonna ask that you, you do that quickly, right? In, in, a, in a measured amount of time, because we're, we're also balancing the fact that we have this debris on your lots and, we're, and, and we wanna get it in a safe storage area. Uh, and so we don't, we don't want it to, to drag this process out too long. If you say, I, I'm not interested in, in the property and going through my property, we're just gonna put you right on the runway and, and get your debris removed. Now, because you're on the runway, it doesn't mean you're gonna stop hearing from us. Because every property that enters the runway, three days before we come to your home, we're gonna call you, the, the, the contractor's gonna call you and say, hey, we're gonna be out to your property in three days. So you have some time to prepare. And then they're gonna call you 24 hours in advance and say, tomorrow, we're gonna come to your property. Do you want to be there? And, and you can show up, maybe you don't want to sit through the debris. That's fine. Maybe you just want to be there to observe the, the debris removal operations and maybe get some closure in your life. And that is totally fine. We'll just make sure that you're at a safe distance because safety uh, is our number one priority uh, out in, the, in this uh, impacted area. And then um, when, when that's all done, if, and our crews are, are very, very thorough. So if they did find something while cleaning the debris, obviously they would secure that if it's a personal possession. You know, we would secure that for you and, and, and either hold it uh, to give to you, or if you're there in person, we would, you know, we'd make sure we, we get it to you uh, to, to take home and, and ultimately to take back to your home once it's rebuilt. Um, and all this information in more detail than I gave you will be posted uh, on the website here here soon. We're just making some final refinements and, and it'll be posted. You can look it up uh, and get and get uh, that those details. So I guess my, I know that I'm going on for a while, but I just want to tell you, you're going to hear from us multiple times if you have a deferred property. And throughout all of those contacts, all those touch points, you're going to have options to, to come out to the property if, if you desire. 
And if you don't, rest assured, if we find something, we will secure it for you, right? We've done it before, uh, it, is our, it is our process and we will do it for you. Now, um, I talked about ROEs. So if you're confused and say you don't wanna ask a question tonight or you don't wanna see one of my teammates in a red or, or myself, I'm gonna give you a phone number, maybe some of you have it. It's 877-214-7000. I'll read that one more time. 877-214-9117. And if you call that number, a very nice lady will answer the phone. She works for me. And, and she will either have an answer for you or she will connect you to someone on my team who can get you an answer. We stand ready to help you make a decision about ROEs and to help make this transition, um, this recovery, uh, as, as painless as, pro as possible. I appreciate your time tonight. Mahalo. And I'm going to pass it to the EPA. Thank you. Aloha. Uh, first time I spoke to you all, uh, I was a little more nervous. Uh, I rehearsed a lot more. Um, now I just, I, I'm starting to recognize folks. I think a few people are starting to recognize me and it feels really good to come out here and talk to you guys. Uh, thank you so much for being so welcoming. Um, so uh, as you know, uh, EPA is now on the ESF3 um, water and wastewater mission assignment from FEMA. And uh, I'm very pleased to be able to announce that we completed our work on sewer line inspections. Uh, that work is completely done. Uh, I want to explain a little bit how it went. Uh, those operations uh, consisted of clearing those lines so that the camera could get a good view of the interior. Uh, we then sent a camera drone through the pipes to capture video and data. And uh, there is this thing of the defer to county so some of those sewer lines were either inaccessible, uh, some were flooded and couldn't be uh, you know, emptied of water fast enough, some were blocked. Um, however, even that deferred list is information for uh, Department of Environmental Management. They can use that information to prioritize critical infrastructure repairs uh, in order to most quickly uh, restore wastewater service. They're gonna have to do it carefully they have to protect the treatment plant, as I think we talked about a, about a month ago. Uh, but uh, it's in their hands. They have all the information, and their uh, contractors and their staff are examining it and, and working towards the next steps. So you'll hear more from uh, Department of Environmental Management uh, in, in future meetings. Um, I can't really speak to their timeline. But uh, we do know that we accelerated the process by doing this work. And so we thank FEMA and we thank all of you for your uh, cooperation on this effort. It went really well. Um, and we did it basically when we said we would, about 35 days of work. So what's next? Uh, we have been here uh, working with the Department of Water Supply uh, for, for many months. We, we were helping. Uh, support them, consult with them on the process of lifting the water, uh, unsafe water advisories throughout different areas, the different uh, drinking water areas uh, throughout Lahaina. Uh, the early work was very much what can they most quickly uh, clear, assure that this, the water is safe to drink. Um, they are also uh, working towards the plan that we're now enacting. Uh, so. They are in the process of pressurizing, repressurizing all the different zones so that they can then flush those hydrants. You might have seen hydrants being flushed. Uh, and then our crews have already been working to sample the hydrants. So sampling the hydrants uh, is the first step. And the next step is sampling the laterals that go from the water main to the property. Oh, sorry, I wanted the thing in red. Uh, we're not the deciders on um, when your area uh, is safe for, for drinking or not. So the county's website will still be uh, the authority on MauiRecovers.org. 
you can look that up and see the status of your area. Uh, so I want to be clear, if you see us out there sampling or flushing, that doesn't mean anything has changed. You have to go to their website uh, to know for sure. And they will certainly announce it when uh, they make further progress. So uh, why are we doing what we're doing? I, I think to understand this, uh, it's, it's good to understand why uh, we even need to do this. So, you know, the water treatment plant, the water sources were unaffected by the fire, thankfully, right? And uh, however, during a fire, service laterals can become contaminated. Uh, fires uh, are burning, and as the water lines are sort of burned and almost cut off, water flows out. And as it flows out, it draws in hot gases, smoke, toxins. And those could be present in the pipes that go from uh, the water meter to the street. It kind of looks like this. Um, there is a part from the water meter to the home that is pretty much a loss. It's uh, most likely been pulled out uh, as part of the debris removal process. Uh, those pipes aren't very deep. Uh, they were attached to the house that burned. So those are basically gone. There is, though, still a pipe from the meter box to the water main. That's, that's the lateral that we're talking about. And that's the responsibility of the uh, Department of Water Supply. That's, they own it, and they're responsible to replace it if it needs replacement. So our first step is to make sure the water in the water mains is clean. If we're going to go test the laterals, we have to make sure that the water in the, in the big pipes uh, meets all the standards. So our first step and what we've nearly concluded is sampling from these hydrants to assure there are no uh, fire impact uh, contaminants in the water mains. And it basically looks like this. They attach a little faucet, they take a little sample, and those samples get sent off to a lab. Uh, so that's the progress with the hydrants. Um, we're very close to completing these. Uh, there are some culturally sensitive areas that we haven't gotten to. And uh, we're uh, hiring cultural monitors to be with us to make sure uh, in those areas we don't um, tread upon uh, EV Kapuna, basically. The next step will be sampling the laterals. So one, once we know the water in the main is clean, we can then sample the laterals. And this will tell us if the lateral was contaminated during the fire. If the lateral was contaminated during the fire, the next step is to cut and cap it. Uh, that basically removes it from the system and prevents those contaminants from re-entering the water system so that the rest of the water system uh, can be cleared for use. If you return to your home during a re-entry process and you see one of these apparatus on your water meter box, uh, first of all, that's what it is. That's what it's there for. We'll be putting a little notice on it that will let you know uh, why it's there. But don't be alarmed, it, it's actually a sign of progress. And uh, we have about 1,370 of these to sample, so it is going to take us some time. We, we can do about 200 a week. Um, that's kind of the max that we can do with county resources and with the laboratory resources. We will be notifying uh, any residents in, you know, in standing structures that, that may be occupied uh, of this works uh, before we do it so that everyone's aware. So uh, we're sort of at the start of this laterals process. Uh, like I said, it's going to take us some weeks to get through it. Um, if you need uh, more information or other questions asked, there's a few different resources. We have, uh, of course, a website. Um, you can also go to Maui Recovers and, and check up on your zone, whether it's being cleared or not. And uh, we do have a call center. So Monday through Saturday, 7 to 7, you can call to get any questions answered um, from one of our staff. Um, as well as an email. Uh, I can't speak to timelines precisely. Uh, I can tell you that we've been asked by, by the mayor, by the county, to prioritize certain areas where there are more uh, standing structures that can be occupied, but there's not currently water service. Uh, so because of that, uh, that will be where we start. We'll start there. We'll, we'll go as fast as possible in those areas. Uh, where there are standing homes so that we can hopefully allow the, the 
County of Maui to clear those areas uh, for water usage. Uh, so I'm happy to take questions afterwards during Q&A. Thank you so much. Mahalo. I love you all here. Okay, progress. Good. Uh, at this time, we're making good time. So we're going to go ahead and start taking questions uh, from anyone here that our presenters can answer. We also have representatives from FEMA here and as much of our team as possible. Um, same same process. We have Joshua Cooper tonight helping us run the mic. So if you raise your hand um, and speak into the mic. So we'll go first with this gentleman here. And then uh, the woman uh, on the third row right behind him. Go ahead, sir. Josh, press and hold the button. Yeah, Josh. You got to turn it on. Not you, sir. <laughs> when you completed the uh, sewer survey, what did you find? Where? How does it stand? So, uh, just to be clear, uh, you know, it is the Department of Environmental Management who's doing the evaluation of the video and so forth. What I can say is kind of what was expected. There are some areas with a lot of uh, uh, inflow and infiltration. Uh, those areas, meaning groundwater is flowing in, too much to send to the treatment plants. So they're going to have to go and target areas where they can make urgent repairs. Uh, you know, largely the system is, I, I think, fine, but there are definitely key areas that need repair. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, please go out FEMA this morning. I have uh, talked to FEMA and they um, moved me in to stay with it for two people, my husband and I, and I tried to ask for help. And they were telling me, just go ahead and move in. They will take care of it. How's that happen? And I have with my uh, health condition, asthma and migraine, and stay with the stereo. And then when they move me in, the patio door not even locked, cannot lock. AC is not even work. Big hole with screen door. And they tell me, go ahead and move in. How's that? And, I, and now I have to check out Red Cross. And I come and talk to them. They say, it's OK. But that's not OK. I'm the one deal with the every day, go to work, come home with my stuff. And the FEMA say, it's OK. They don't deal with it. I'm the one deal with it every day. They don't understand my homework. Everything is gone. Yeah, I'm sorry that happened to you. Um... And I denied the first time at studio. I denied it already. And now they tell me again, they go back to the <coughs> studio again. I so, just asked for one bedroom, one bath for myself, for my husband and I, two people. Yeah, just talk to me uh, after the meeting and I'll help you. But I'm sorry that happened to you for, for the second time. Thank you. Okay. And yeah, we also have, I, I do know we have Red Cross here as well. Um, again, raise your hand. I think what she was saying was she has to move out of Red Cross because she's moving into a unit, so. right? Right, I get it. Okay, got it. Perfect. All right. Um, please raise your hand if you have a question that our team can answer or bring in the front row here. Is it because it's too warm? You folks don't have a whole lot of questions. All right, go ahead, man. Uh, thank you. This question is actually for Tamara and um, Mayor Bisson. Uh, if this condemnation um, hearing goes through with this uh, vote, will that set a precedent uh, on condemnation down the road so that when um, the county is coming into Lahaina to say um, widen the road, will this condemnation that you've done set a precedent for moving forward in that? Thank you. In, in my opinion, I don't think so. Each condemnation procedure needs to be taken on its own face value for the public good. But there's also things happening at the state um, where there's another bill where they would take that authority out from the county. And I think it's SB 3381. So that's not been decided yet because the legislature is still in session. But that's my answer. You might want to hear from somebody with a law degree. We'll go find somebody for you who can do that. 
Um, there's already precedence on eminent domain. This isn't the first time this is happening, but each case has to stand on its own. It has to be, uh, there has to be a reason. So on this particular issue, I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail. Uh, we're talking about the quarry that is the central Maui, that is the central Maui landfill currently. So what happens historically is when the quarry is quarried and there's 45 or 50 feet of depth, we're the only ones who want to buy that. Most people don't want to buy a hole in the ground. You can't do a whole lot with it. So we fill it up with our trash. That's what we've done historically. This is where the next phase was coming in and someone else bought it. It wasn't sold to us before I got here. But the point of the matter is we're trying to get it now because we need it because there's 400,000 tons that needs to go somewhere. And this is where the community said they wanted to go. But we knew at the time we didn't own the land. Uh, yes, we've tried to purchase the land. Uh, because they know we need it and want it, they're asking for a very high price, higher than the appraised value. So one of our options as government is to prove that this is necessary and that we will pay them what it costs for that land. Now there's an appraised value and we were willing to pay higher than that, but they wanted it much higher than that. So what's available to us on behalf of every one of you here is to eminent domain that because we can prove that it's necessary for us. But more importantly, this has been our pattern for years. But when somebody sees you coming, they go, okay, I'm gonna go get ahead of you. I'm gonna get it. And that's what happened. Now that's what I know in the 14 months that I've been part of administration. But this has been going on for years, our pattern. So unless you have another situation that is identical to what I just explained to you, this is not precedence for anything else. There's only precedence if you have a hole in the ground and you're trying to build it for a landfill and all that has to be identical for it to be called precedence. Precedence can mean for some people something that came before, but it really means it has to line up in the same. So if you folks think there's a similar situation in Lahaina to what I just explained, then maybe this was presence, but I don't know that. I, I don't think that that's the same. But of course, there is that condemnation, eminent domain, but there's a, there's a standard to follow. The good news for us, and what council member was talking about, is that as soon as we get this approved, we can start using it. In other words, we can start building it into what it needs to be, because that's gonna take a little while for us to convert it to what we need it to be. So the quicker we get it, the quicker we start it, the quicker we move things from behind us straight there instead of stopping at Oluwalu. So I don't wanna call the situation urgent, but what I would say is um, we have a good basis. Y'all still call it great, yes, urgent. Um, but we have a good basis for our request. And what, and what we're asking for is reasonable and it's not, um, we're not taking somebody's prime land you know, somewhere on the island and just to take it. We have a very good reason. We have a public need. It's been available. It is available. We just have to go through this process. So I appreciate you guys' support on that. Thank you, Mayor. I would say it's urgent. Um, you know, the only thing that happens, I mean, a, a committee meets, so there's committee meetings and council meetings. Committee meetings are generally three hours long. We took time out of the council meeting to discuss this already during the council meeting for three hours. So I don't know what another three hours of discussion is going to do. We can only eminent, pri eminent domain private land for a public purpose. We cannot eminent domain private land and give it to another private citizen. We can only do that for a public purpose. And from some of the discussions outside of the meeting, um, that's what they told me they wanted to do. And I, I was like, no, you can't. Eminent domain, private land 
and take it away from one private owner and give it to another private owner. You can only eminent domain land for a private, from a private owner for a public purpose. And um, I'm not sure what they don't understand. I'm not sure if they're not following the survey, not following the Wednesday night meetings, not seeing what we go through on the road every day in and out with the construction on the guardrails, the construction on Kiave Street, the, construct, the temporary traffic lights. They're not living with that like we are. I tried my best to explain it. Um, I got a little testy, but it, it didn't work. So I'm calling for backup, um, whether it's written testimony, oral testimony, I said something like, if you want to waste time, we can waste time and you can hear from everyone from Lahaina. Um, and I didn't mean it as a threat. Hopefully I meant it as a promise. We'll see. Thank you. Great question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, please raise your hand again if you have a question and we'll have Josh. Uh, run around. There you go. Go ahead. Uh, these questions is for FEMA. Uh, number one, what was the answer for the uh, crushed gravel for property owners? I, I didn't get to that. I didn't hear the answer. Number two question is, uh, some of my friends from my former life was asking, if you're a convicted felon, does that automatically put you out from um, direct leasing or any kind of FEMA housing? Uh, I have a couple of people that's asking me that they've been um, they've been out of prison, out of jail for the last 10 plus, 15 plus years, not in no run-ins, and they don't qualify for FEMA's housing program. To your first question regarding the crest gravel, I don't know about that question. What was it? It was, uh, that was for Army Corps, sorry. That was the Army Corps okay. question, but what it was was the crushed gravel was going to be laid on our properties after the cleanup for dust control and dust mitigation and soil mitigation. But for cleanup after, the property owner, the homeowner is solely responsible for that cleanup of the gravel if they don't use it. Okay, you want to answer that now and then I answer. I'll answer your second question now. For the convicted felons, if they are uh, FEMA eligible, they are eligible for our direct lease program. It's simple as that. So the, the concern was, is they're doing the background check, right, for the housing? That's fine. Um, we've got a place for them. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I just answered the question about the crushed gravel. We are using, still using crushed gravel um, for erosion <coughs> control. Um, and like the fence material, so if you have a pool in your backyard or an open pit hazard. Uh, we are installing a six foot, like, or I think a six foot fence uh, around that hazard, right? That's just to prevent someone from, from falling in the pool or hurting themselves at the property. So just like that, that becomes the property of the, uh, of the homeowner once, once we return the right of entry back to the county and back to the homeowner, just like the gravel will be, um, will be uh, owned by the by the homeowner. Right, but some of these properties, we cannot use that crushed gravel. We have to remove the gravel to rebuild in certain cases. So what I'm saying is you guys are adding an extra cost to the homeowners to have that removed because you guys or Alpha or uh, Truth Excavation or CMAP, they're not gonna come in after the fact to remove that gravel, number one. Number two, can I just request that CMAC piles it on my property instead of spreading it if it has mandated that they have to put their gravel on my property? Because I cannot afford, I am severely uninsured. I cannot afford to move that gravel around once I'm ready to rebuild. Yeah, I, I, understand, I understand the question and I understand the concern, um, but we're also balancing the need to keep the soil you have on, your ground, on the ground it, it, within the boundaries of your lot. And so uh, we don't know how long it will take um, for each homeowner to rebuild. And I think that, I don't think anyone knows how long it will take to rebuild at this point. We're, we're still working through, the county is still working through that process. But, but even if they announce the, 
the plan tonight. Uh, I, I don't think it's realistic that um, all the homes that have been, you know, that we can't, we're not going to be able to start construction in two months and build 1,600 homes overnight. So, so some homes are, are going to, some lots will sit there longer, and we need to keep that soil uh, in place so that you are able to rebuild. So I know it's unfortunate, um, and it does create an extra cost. We, we tried to provide additional economic benefit to the, uh, to the homeowner by removing the existing foundation so that uh, you're able to, you don't have to pay that cost uh, down, down the road when, you, when it comes time to pour a new foundation. And, and that would be a bigger cost, uh, in my mind, than it would be to, to remove um, the gravel. So I acknowledge it's not, a, some of you, it's not the perfect answer. It's not what some of you want to hear. Uh, we're doing everything we can to speed your and reduce the cost of your uh, of your of your reconstruction. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, Mayor, to add a little bit more, and again, raise your hand to me. Uh, Jeremy, thank you for that Gosh. question. That's a fair question. Are there any suggestions from anybody here about what else we could do? Um, because one of the ideas was brought up was the hydro. Uh, Hydro grass, what is it called? Hydro seeding, hydro seeding. That um, they were not able to do in the climate conditions here. That was what was brought up last, uh, the last time this question was asked. Because it was done in Kula and it was, it would, the weather was just different in our climate. Um, I guess this would fall into the category of a trade-off. Of either not removing the slab, allowing the dirt to run away, possibly making it worse, uh, or having something that keeps your lot as intact as possible, considering everything that you folks have all been through. Um, but if there are other alternatives, this is a good forum to share that. We, we got the Army Corps folks here. Uh, maybe there's something unique to, to Lahaina that could be considered. I don't know what that is. Um, say that again. Lay plastic? Okay, what about laying down plastic, rolls of plastic across? I mean, I'm not sure what you would put on top of it to keep it down. Maybe put something on top of the plastic to keep it from blowing away or leaving. Landscaping stakes. See, that's good stuff, Jeremy. I mean, honestly, stuff that nobody else has thought of. So a lot of the stuff that's happening right now, nobody's really thought of some of the stuff. It's all kind of unique. Um, but this is why we have these meetings, so we can have the good ideas. Before I have a we'll, question. We'll go there. Oh, we get somebody. Sorry. I don't want to be holding this, but you think I'm answering. Um, I want to thank the EPA for getting this sewer lines scoped. Thank you so much. Um, so now we're moving, from what I understand, to the county now needs to deal with the last 10% and get that uh, back up in line because really we can't do anything until the sewer lines are functional. So what what's the next step to functionality of the sewer lines? Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, so I can't speak for the county. What I can say and, and sort of uh, there was a press release, Shane Nagawa sort of said it, so I'm not putting words in his mouth, that uh, the, what we did made things go a lot faster. It would have been months and months, years even, uh, because just the sheer quantity of sewer lines. Um, I, yeah, so I can't speak to them. We're going to have to let uh, Department of Environmental Management speak for themselves. I will just say, though, that uh, the indications were, as in answering this gentleman's question as well, that there are some key areas that can make some key repairs and, and hopefully be able to, to open up, uh, certainly in the north and the south, you know, where there are standing structures. That's the, the priority. So uh, not, not, not exactly the answer. Unfortunately, the, the person to give you that answer, I don't think is here today. So it's the best I can do. Thanks. Thank you for the question, sir, in the front row. Anyone else? Um, I was just on Jeremy's question about plastic. What about the burlap that they put at the temporary school? 
I don't know how cost effective or how much labor intensive that would be, but that's uh, better than a plastic bag. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, I think the burlap was part of a, a seating operation and, and there's, a, there's, a, there's sprinklers that is keeping that area hydrated so that the, the vegetation will grow. Um, the challenge is we don't have, if you live in Lahaina, you, you know, that we, we don't have that, those conditions for, um, to put sprinklers back in. We, we don't even have all the water lines yet. So, uh, although hydro seeding is a great option in many climates, uh, it, it doesn't work here. And as the mayor said, and I probably didn't articulate well, we're just, we're, we're trading, we're trying to trade off to, to give you the, the homeowner, the, what we think is the most, the more important benefit acknowledging that it does have some drawbacks and there will be some excess costs uh, if you have to remove the, the gravel. Um, so, yeah. yes, sir. Oh, wait for the mic. So. What material is the gravel? So we, we, we it could be either cinder or, or uh, just crushed, um, is it number, number two gravel? Um, most of the trucks I've seen and most of the lots I've seen, it's just sort of the number, it's like the crushed, uh, you know, uh, three quarter inch uh, gravel. Again, raise your hand if you've got a question. The front row. Thank you. My question um, pertains to the cleanup. Once the debris is cleaned up and you take off the six inches, if it comes back that you have to do another six inches, is there a a process you get kind of put down to the end of the line and have to wait or how does that work? No, we have what we call a rescraping crews. So uh, there's a sort of a deliberate flow chart. You, your lot is cleared initially of the debris down to six inches. Then there's a sampling team, an environmental team that goes out and samples. We get those results back. I'd like to say five days is probably more like 10 days by the time we send the sample off and we get the results back. If those results come back uh, and, and they're negative, then, then we, the, the contractor moves into the next phase, which is the erosion control. Uh, if, if we get, um, if it comes back in areas where it is positive, then we just go to those areas. We do it in a grid. So just to those specific areas, we remove six additional inches uh, and send that off. And then uh, we will we will put um, the erosion protection frozen control back on, on top of that. But no, you don't, it's not, you don't go to the bottom of the list. It's, you know, we're, we're trying to march through these homes so that we're not, uh, you know, you don't get your work done today and then six months from now it's finished. We're... Do we get notification if it was positive, like if, if it was good and it passed or no? I, Corey, do we, I don't, I'm going to pass this to Corey. I, I don't know if the, contractor calls again, you know, you get the 72 hour out. Sometimes you get 10 days out, 72 hours out for sure. 24 hours out. Uh, Aloha. Um, so if the soil samples pass, then we're going to do the closeout process in that closeout process is an affidavit that we signed saying that it did pass that goes back to the county. So you will be notified at that point. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, we have a question there, the front row at the end. So my question is for EPA. Um, what takes so long about the um, this water infrastructure process? Like what makes it take so long? Are you referring to the uh, sampling or what do you mean by water infrastructure process? I suppose sampling could be the answer. And so then my question would be for county or FEMA, I guess, is there um, government funding available that we could stand a lab up on the island so that we don't have that lag time between when the test gets sent off and when the results come in? Because we have the same issue with the water sampling that people are doing and the nonprofits and all that stuff. Um, I, would, I would suggest that trying to set up a lab here uh, for, for this purpose would take a lot longer. Uh, the shipping off island uh, is not really the slow part. Um, these lab uh, for these contaminants, it's about a two-week process to get to a final result. 
Uh, so it's, it's a, um, it's just a highly complex technical process that just takes that long. We get preliminary results, uh, about four or five days after, uh, after the sample, but, uh, in order for those to be fully, you know, sort of QA'd final results, it takes about two weeks. Um, but we're going to, the, the slow part is actually sort of just the, the labor of going and setting up the apparatus, uh, flushing them out, waiting, sampling. We have to do a little a stagnation period just to get a clean, you know, good sample. And then moving that whole apparatus to another place. So uh, that's just very labor intensive. So that's why we can only do 200 uh, a week. So it's kind of a capacity issue as well in terms of manpower? Um, so to speak. Uh, so is that something the, that we can request additional support for? The county is involved in that part of moving the apparatus and they only have so many uh, people to, to do that work. And it is, you know, it's their system. So they're attaching pipes to their system. Uh, so it's, uh, it's not easy to just sort of throw more people at that because, you know, it's, it requires sort of uh, certified operators who know how to do that work. And again, it's, it's their property. So they have to be responsible for that part of it. Thank you for the question. Any other questions we can help with? Okay, we'll go in the middle here. Thank you, John. <coughs> Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Quick question for you, Gay. Um, when they're doing these cap the sampling, and if a line or a lateral passes, do they put the meter back on, or do they cap it again and have to have more work later? Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. Let me let me try to. So when you're sampling the, the laterals for the water, yes. and if it passes, yes. do they put the meter back on so it can be used? So or do they cap it again so that somebody has to come back out again later to put a meter on later? Yeah. Um, most likely the meter will be replaced at the time that the structure is rebuilt and the, the customer side connection is made. Uh, what happens is there is a valve, they'll just close it off. Uh, they'll close up the meter box to just protect it as much as possible. Uh, and then at that future date, um, during the re rebuilding process, a new you know customer side line will be brought to that meter box. And I, I can't promise it, but it, I believe the indication in many cases that they'll replace the meter. Uh, if it's serviceable, they, they might use the same meter. Thank you. Um, before Jeremy asks this question, I want to let you know that, again, those bottles of water in the front, please help yourself if you would like some. Go ahead, Jeremy. So for mayor and the county, uh, can we get somebody from either public works? I know Jordan's been here a few times, but more directly the planning department, because what is the next step as far as they clean my property? I get my plans. How long am I sitting? Like you said, the neighborhoods, we, we gotta have hard discussions. I understand that we, we have to, we have to decide how we're gonna design our neighborhoods, but is the county even planning on in Waikuli to put underground electric? Are, are they gonna dig it up? Because to point out, I don't know if uh, how many people actually seen, there was two lots, my lot and my neighboring lot, just two lots being clean. And the amount of traffic in that area, there's no way to get any trades, pump trucks, cement trucks, anything in that neighborhood. Uh, Colonel was visiting at the time of my cleanup and the amount of traffic in there is, is crazy. And Waikuli, Anakia Road is a, is a pretty big road. So to get this ball rolling, I was told you guys having neighborhood meetings in April, beginning next month, how long those meetings gonna take and then a decision by the county. So we're looking in my opinion at, at, at least six months out before we decide what we're gonna do and how we're gonna progress. So I, I would like to request the planning department to be here just so we could have direct communication with them. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so let me try to break down my answer to those questions. I think the first practical thing, and I think everybody sees it already, we're up at 306 lots that have been cleared. That's with 20, 21 crews. There's a lot of activity going on in the impact zone, as you, as you just pointed out, just on your street, your level. So even if, even if all the infrastructure was in, you had clear, sewer lines, you had clean water, you had electricity above or below ground, you had all that. 
how you're going to get a truck loaded with material around working around all these other machinery in there is just a reality. Is, it, is that truck just going to wait until it's clear to go in, drop the load, come back out, and then you're going to get your work crews in there. They're going to build and they're going to, you know, manufacture your home while this is going on with everything else. That's just the first part, which is why we're trying as quickly as possible to just clear areas by grids so that we can clear up that the traffic that's happening right now. But on top of that, we haven't cleared the sewer lines and the water lines. So that's another factor. And I know what everybody wants is a timeline. What is the timeline? Is it going to be one week, two weeks, one month, five years? As soon as we can get these committee or these uh, meetings, neighborhood meetings together, I think we'll have a much better idea. Um, and I don't know if you missed the early part, but Mahina announced all the community meetings that are coming up at the very start of the meeting. And she mentioned the specific dates. I've already forgotten the dates, but I know people were writing them down. And she can repeat them again, and we're going to repeat them again. Um, so those are some of the things we're dealing with just on the practical level. The other thing is, what do you want to build back? You want to build back a larger home than before, a smaller home? I mean, so we, we, we're setting up an expedited permitting process for everybody. Um, but there's going to be that discussion. The codes, the zones, you know, all that stuff. So you're right to ask for planning to come. That, tonight wasn't a housing meeting, so they're not here. But... Um, yeah, once we know what you folks want, who you guys want us to bring, I know the first thing you guys want us to bring is the air conditioning guy, right? That's the first thing. I know that's what I want, and I'm standing here. But I would say that um, having planning come, you may get different answers than what I just gave you as far as the projections. Um, but we absolutely understand everybody wants to get back to their lots. And some of you have ideas of driving, a, driving something on the lot. You don't even have to build it. Just drive it there, set it up figure out the infrastructure, uh, not the infrastructure, but the, uh, yeah, I guess the sewer, the water and all that. A lot of you have innovative ideas about how that can be done. So we want to talk about that too. We want to consider that too. That might be the way to go in some lots. Instead of bringing a bunch of building material, you just drive your modular home, mobile home out on the property. And that's not out of the question. So again, I think it's going to take some planning when we have the neighborhood piece I know we're not as moving as quickly as people would like, but I just want to point out what the EPA said. They saved us a couple of years by what they just did. And I'd like to focus on that piece, um, on what, you know, what, what's, where that brings us today. And this, for everything else, actually, for a lot of the other stuff that's happened that they've been ahead of schedule on, I think everybody has their foot on the gas and everybody's trying to make it happen just as quickly as possible. But thank you for continuing to remind us because we can always do better. So I hope that answered your questions. I'm not sure if I missed a couple, but I think Sarah might have better answers than me. I was just going to say one thing. Again, we can't speak for all of the departments. I support the infrastructure recovery team that is made up with Public Works, Department of Environmental Management, Highways, so on and so forth. There's a lot of questions that you guys ask in these meetings that are really technical and sometimes need more coordination. So to better be able to answer what you guys are asking, we made this QR code. The goal is to start to collect these specific questions to homeowners and property owners so that we can answer these questions at the April 16th meeting and formalize that agenda to be able to speak to what you guys are asking and have been asking for months since the fires. So that's the goal of this meeting and we mahalo those homeowners that came up to the county and suggested this idea. And I do want to say that the infrastructure RSF is going to take this really seriously so that we can get you guys answers and we don't have to say we don't know or defer. Um, that is not promising that we'll have all the answers at the April 16th meeting, but at least we'll be able to address those concerns or speak to why they're a little bit more complicated and we need other people to engage and help us on those. So could you click into the next one right after this? Following that, as we announced earlier, will be the beginning of neighborhood planning workshops. And again, these are going to be specific to neighborhoods that need uh, particular discussions. Uh, our first one is going to be Saturday, April 20th at 3 o'clock for the Kilauea Mauka neighborhood. And if you are unable to join us at that uh, in person, our planning department, our community planning team 
is working on an online option, not for that exact meeting, but a separate one that folks can participate. Um, are there any other questions that we can help with? Okay, sir, in the red shirt, followed by back to the front, back to the next one. Okay, I'm gonna get that clicker back from Sarah. We'll leave that, this one up a little bit. Sarah, can I get that one back? Okay, my question is um, on this April 16 meeting, can we ask Senator McCulloch to come over to explain his Senate Bill 3381? Uh, well, we can certainly ask. Yes, I can ask him to come. Now, he doesn't work for me. Thank you. He does work for you guys, so you guys can ask him to come. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll ask him, obviously, he's with the state. And um, I'm not sure he's still supporting his bill anymore. I, I can't really tell that. But I, I obviously, he was one of the co-sponsors of the bill. And, um, you know, and bills tend to morph. They tend to change over time uh, as it gets crossed over, which is its crossover now. Um, but we're watching it very closely. Uh, yeah. On behalf of the administration, we're, we're not in favor of that bill. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Any others? Please raise your hand. Okay, right here in the second row in the brown shirt. Anyone else? Okay, we'll go there and then Joshua all the way to the top. Yeah, we want to see the top like rows because he didn't get his steps in today. So and make sure you wait till you come all the way down, then tell him. Come down. You know, she brought somebody new in, but he didn't know any better. Go ahead, man. I think it's on. Um, I had a question about uh, the base uh, that you said the rock, the gravel was three quarter inch. And I believe that's base that they use for other things like asphalt driveways, even roadways. But if it's smaller than that, it, it still might be able to be recycled. So, you know, maybe for the homeowners that initially have it on, it can move to another property, uh, particularly if there's a point where they're able to build in one area where they're still clearing in another area um, that it's not necessarily that it's of no value and can, you know has to be thrown away but has some some use to it depending on what it is yes I, I mean I would agree with you maybe it could be used under a shed it's, that's that's um, again I'm not I don't know what the permitting is but I mean there's there's uh, there's other uses for for this gravel um, that, that, and again it like fences if we leave it on your property, it's 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 part of it's the owner's property after the ROE is is uh, relinquished back to the homeowner. So, but but thank you. It, it, they could have other. There are the uses for it. It is a it is a like a commodity, right? It could be someone else might buy it from you. I don't know. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you. Gentleman at the top, go ahead. Um, I have a follow-up question to uh, one of Jeremy's comments about the gravel and also the other gentleman over here that talked about the water meter. Um, would it be possible for us to get a water meter um, permit ahead of the building permit so that we could put irrigation on our lots and irrigate it as opposed to putting the gravel on it in order to hold the erosion down? Um, we've had, you know, control the erosion on our lots without gravel forever and ever and ever. The gravel is actually kind of um, a little bit difficult for a lot of people to deal with. And some lots are um, probably more susceptible to runoff than others, and some lots may not actually need the gravel at all. But could we get a um, um, water meter permit ahead of it? Sir, I'm so sorry. I don't have that answer. You would have to contact the Department of Water Supply. Um, so, sorry. But, we're we're going to add that question for the homeowners meeting. I think that's a great one. Go ahead. <laughs> Since he's here, <laughs> um, a couple questions. One is, and I don't know if the EPA can answer it, but you had mentioned that you can only do 200 properties a week. Is that correct? With the staff that you have with the county? Uh, yes, there's also the sampling apparatus it, themselves. Uh, it's a whole uh, set of pipes made of copper. So uh, we can always create more. We're going to try every way possible to move faster, but we, we do have to uh, 
accept the limitations of the county staff. Would, would we be able to fly over like from Kauai and Oahu and the Big Island? Could we fly over certified water experts and extra equipment just to expedite the, the process of, of checking everything? Could we be flying them over? A lot of people commute inner island for, for work. Could they be, could we, if you had more certified help um, in, in with expert in Hawaii's water regulations, would that help expedite the process? That's a possibility. Uh, it's again, something that I can decide. We can certainly you know, talk with the Department of Water Supply and, and the mayor's is office. That, is that a mayor question? Could be. Yeah, it's a question for the mayors of the other islands to answer because I don't control anybody else's crew or employees, but certainly we could ask and reach out. Um, you know, if we had more money, if we had more people, we could do a lot more things. Um, you know, we're dealing with the situation that we have right now with all the experts that we've already called in. Um, we, I'm assuming the other counties have their own work that they do with their crews. Uh, but if there are extra folks that are available, certainly we can ask them. I'll see two mayors tomorrow. Um, so I'll ask them when I see them, if, can we have their people? And we'll see what they say. Um, I just want to point out, they just saved us a couple of years with what they've already done. So we're, we're, we're kind of ahead and I'm just feeling grateful for that. Yeah. Um, but yes, um, yeah, with, with, with unlimited money and unlimited people, we could do unlimited things, I would say. I would say that. That's true. Um, but I'd have to ask these folks if they can spare us. Well, with, with the funding, have we asked like our senators on the federal level, um, Schatz and Hirono and all those guys, have we asked if they can get us funding to help with some of these things? So um, the short answer is yes. Um, but the long answer is all the time. Um, because that's why all these folks are here right now. Um, again, even the federal government does not have unlimited money. And we're not the only disaster that they're dealing with. Um, there have been several disasters since ours. I know you folks follow the news and understand that. Um, you know, I, I just want to say there's always a balance you have to strike when you ask for something from somebody else. Because you can risk, I don't know, ruining that relationship, or you can try to be diplomatic. I mean, every one of you can, you know, think of your own skill sets that you have in negotiating with somebody else. Uh, and you can have the pound your hand on the table and say, give me everything I want and get zero. Or you can say, give me what you can afford, give me what I deserve, give me what is ours because we are all taxpayers. Um, we have four people, four delegates in Congress, and they have voices. And I got to tell you, from behind the scenes, they've been absolutely incredible for what we have now. Because most of us haven't gone through this. We don't know if what we're getting is little bit, plenty, average. Um, well, when you talk to the FEMA guys, they describe us as the most complex disaster that they've ever worked. They don't have a gauge of how long to keep people in hotels, how much that costs. That's the issue we're fighting with the legislature right now. If you're watching what we're asking for from the Ways and Means Committee, where we send our people over there with our knee pads and our documents, and our proof, and they say, yeah, you're one of plenty of people who have come to us to ask for money. You're just one. Now, you're important. Everybody else is important. Every other island is looking at what Maui's getting. Every other state is looking at what Hawaii is getting. So I would say we're on the radar. And I would say that our federal partners are working very hard for us. Um, but we haven't stopped asking, and we're not going to stop asking because we know what it takes. And that's our job. Our job as administration is to ask for resources and to try to get resources here. 
that's what we've been doing. That's what we are going to continue to do, whether it's state, county, federal, private, philanthropic, non-government organizations. There's so many. Um, that's the best answer I can give you. That's good. Thank yeah. you. I have a question for Army Corps of Engineers, too. Go ahead. Please. Yes, ma'am. With a 72-hour notice, if you happen to have just taken off for a two-week trip off the island, what's the protocol for if we want to be around when they clear the lots? What's the protocol for if we can't be there in 72 hours? Um, do you get stuck to the back of the line? Do you work with each individual property owner? How, how, how are you handling that situation? I would say it's a case-by-case -case basis. So if you make a case that you can't, you want to be there, you can't be there, we will try to move you down the, the batting order, continuing on my baseball theme. We'll move you down the batting order. So instead of batting second, you'll bat fifth. Um, I mean, look, we're, we got heavy equipment on the roads. Uh, we've got 21 crews out spread across Lahaina. That's for a purpose, that's for a reason, right? We, we're spreading it out across Lahaina because we're trying to mitigate traffic. We're trying to, to keep um, the crews safe by keeping them spread out and not on top of each other. So you'll see a crew who'll be in a community and they'll work, you know, they might bounce around a little bit, but they're generally staying on Front Street or staying on whatever the, the road they're on, moving back and forth. So at this point, you know, if we put you down the batting order, you, you know, you might, you might slip back three weeks, but you probably aren't going to slip uh, to, to the bottom. Um, but I, mean, I think you just need to ask, ask that question. You know, can I, I really want to be there. Um, can, can you work with me? And, and our contractors are really good, uh, and, and they will. If, if the contractor comes back and says, no, call Tracy. That's the number I gave you earlier. And she'll get a hold of us, and we'll, we'll sort something out. I'd say that though, a little bit tongue in cheek, but I, I said we are still dealing with an emergency and, and it, it is in everyone's best interest to get the ash debris out of properties and into a safe storage area where it can't, you know, do other damage, run off into the, into the ocean, et cetera. So, so although we are flexible, um, we, we really, we really want to get your, if you're, if you're on the list, we really want to get your property, um, property done. Uh, that answer your question. Thank you, Colonel. Yeah. Uh, we'll take, uh, another question before we'll have mayor go ahead and close and our team will be here. Okay. Uh, before mayor closes here, I did want to say that this Friday, uh, will be the state of the county address by mayor Bisson. We'll be at the Maui Arts and Culture Center and the Castle Theater. The doors will open at 5 o'clock. Uh, we are also broadcasting live on Akaku, the county's Facebook page as well. And you can always watch a rerun over it every day if you want. Uh, just go to our MauiCounty.gov and you can view it all over again. And we'll have um, available the, the content of his uh, State of the County address on our website as well. So please join us if you can, or please watch if you're available at this time, uh, Mayor. If you need help falling asleep, you guys can watch that. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so I just wanna say thank you again to everybody for your questions. I know we didn't get uh, all of our resource people here tonight for some of those questions, but we have all of them written down and as Sarah shared, we will get them to the right places so we can have those answers. If not next Wednesday, then by the time we have the neighborhood uh, meetings. I just want to say thank you again to our resource people. who uh, were here to present and answer questions. And I hope you folks all drive home safely. Thank you so much. Good night.